today's video lesson, we're going to discuss how to use Microsoft Outlook's Scheduling Assistant. To give you some quick details, Outlook's Scheduling Assistant is a tool which allows you to invite groups of people to meetings or events without having to email them individually. You complete a new meeting request, which Outlook then emails to the desired recipients in the form of an invitation. When the invitation is sent, a tentative appointment will appear on the invitee's calendar. Potential attendees can then accept or reject your invitation. If an individual accepts, Outlook will automatically mark the time as busy on their calendar. The scheduling assistant, it is a powerful tool, but like many other tools, the value is determined by how people use it. If individuals actively maintain their Outlook calendar, the scheduling assistant can be very useful. However, not all participants for a meeting will have access to Outlook and some will choose not to use the calendar feature. If one or more of your participants do not maintain their Outlook calendar, the value of the scheduling assistant decreases. Now, a quick note, the schedule that is displayed in the scheduling assistant, it's updated about every 15 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and open Microsoft Outlook. This might not be the same Outlook version that you currently use. You may be using Outlook 2007, 2013. Uh, this is currently Outlook 2016. However, the backbone to this, primarily the same, we're just going to be using the email and the Outlook feature or the calendar feature. So in the lower left hand corner, there is an icon that looks similar to a calendar. You can see the little pre-menu uh, pop up there. Once I click on that calendar, it takes me directly to the calendar. Now, from the Home tab and the New Group, we're going to select New Meeting and an untitled Meeting dialog box appears. Looks very similar to an email. And we're going to directly go over to the scheduling assistant, which is in the show group. And this will give you an idea of exactly your current calendar. Now, what we're gonna to want to do, we're gonna to want to select attendees either from an address book or from the all attendees list. We can plug them in there. So if you got an attendee, say you just know their first name, and you want to go ahead and have the list auto populate you can go ahead and make your selection you'll notice here that you have required optional and resources we'll get into that in just a minute let's say okay now if you happen to know and you can see as i made that selection you can see that by making that attendee available or adding their name, it automatically connected me to their calendar so I could see if uh, anything I'm going to propose to them is in conflict with their current calendar. So I can know exactly how to adjust any time zones or time frames. If you happen to know the full name and middle initial of your potential attendee, you can just go ahead and type that in there and it will fulfill that connection as well. Next, you can also make a, an optional classification to your attendees. You'll notice that beside or to the left of the name, you can see that it states that I am the meeting organi organizer to the left of Jeff. We currently have him designated as a required attendee, same as Casey. We can also click on that and we can designate either required, optional, or resource. Now the organizer is the creator of the meeting. The required attendee invitees to be regarded as necessary. The resource this label marks rooms or equipment added to the meeting, also regarded as necessary to the meeting. And optional, this 
is a designation for an invitee for whom attendance is simply optional. It is separated from the required list. Now from the small calendar over on the right, we can go ahead and select the desired meeting day. Currently, it's Wednesday, June the 29th, and our next proposed time you can see right here would be 10.30 to 11, no conflicts with anyone. However, we're going to make a selection. We're going to say Thursday, June the 30th. And according to the current attendees, looks like we're fairly open, no conflicts. Let's go ahead and click on, in the suggested times, the 9 to 9.30 selection. Now you can see what that did over here. Is it aligned any current conflicts and made known the availability. Looks like we're clear. There is nothing listed in any other portion or time segment for any of the current attendees or invitees. You can also notice that in the bottom left hand corner there is a start time and an end time respectively. You could of course make that designation there if you decided not to use the suggested times. It also show whether there is a conflict or whether there is not. Next, uh, just to highlight some of the, the scheduling and what it just applied. Um, you'll see in the, the bottom legend here that there's a couple designations for any type of uh, graphical display um, according to each invited attendee or invitee. Now you can see that right now the blue designation this time if I were to schedule a meeting request that blue designation that means that that uh, that time would be in conflict with our invitee schedule. Now you can see here I currently have a 3 to 3.15 and then also a 3 to 3.15, or excuse me, a 3.30 to 4. So if I wanted to schedule anything, and this of course would be on Wednesday and not Thursday, if I wanted to schedule a time, this would be in conflict if I had anything proposed at this time. If we get, were to go back one day, excuse me, went back a full calendar month, let's go back back to the 28th you can see that if I wanted to propose a an appointment with Jeff he had an appointment from 115 to 330 so down in the bottom left hand corner you can see that he would have been busy and I would have wanted to avoid trying to schedule a meeting with him at that time so let's go back over to the 29th looks like our proposed time it's 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. And let's actually change that to Thursday. There we go. We're all lined back up now. Looks like we're free and clear. Next, the blue and white striped indicator that would come from your invitee's calendar. That mark time is scheduled for uh, or their calendar is set up with tentative appointments and may be in conflict with anything that we're trying to schedule. The purple designation, purple time is marked out as out of the office. You can also see working elsewhere and outside of working hours would be in gray. The no information or black and white striped that marks a period of time which Outlook does not have any information. It could be that the user does not have Outlook or Exchange, or maybe they don't even have an Outlook calendar set up. Now, whenever we respond to a meeting request, we will get into that next. Looks like we got this set up fairly well. Looks like, like the majority of the items we want specifically to this current event are available. If we want to add any additional information, we're going to click on the appointment. And you'll notice that you have a subject field, a location. You also have a full description area where you can add any notes or any precursors to the meeting that you want your invitees to know about. 
we're going to go ahead in the subject field we're going to go ahead and assign this quick meeting location we're going to choose the location that we call the tea room this start time will be thursday june the 30th from nine o'clock until nine thirty if we want to add any notes we could certainly add them here and you will note up top if there were any attachments any outlook items business cards signatures tables pictures online information shapes you can add quite a bit of additional information in here something that you'd want your invitee to have ahead of the meeting so that way if you had any notes or any topics to discuss over documents or anything be able to collaborate them ahead of time before that actual meeting we'll click back up back on the meeting tab when we're we've got everything ready and destined for this meeting to uh, this invitation to be sent out all you have to do is click send and what that will do is that will send an email uh, which is the message request and will actually come into their mailbox it won't be this exact one since mine doesn't go to me however I do or did get one from Jeff and this is what it would look like now, basically responding to it you can see here that he has proposed to me a meeting at 2:30 Friday July the 1st now if I have an understanding of what my calendar is I can go ahead and make the selection of okay I think I'm available let's go ahead accept and send the response now however if I wanted to take a quick look before I did anything or noticed any conflict or anything of that I could go ahead and click on the calendar button what that does is that automatically opens up my personal calendar lets me know hey I believe that I am available now since I'm only utilizing my current personal calendar I could go ahead and select another calendar that I'm assigned to and a part of and I could see if there are any additional conflicts at that time doesn't look like there are and of course there are more calendars that I'm associated with I could make that selection there as well and basing everything off of the personal calendar looks like I'm free in the clear so I'm gonna go ahead and close that next you'll notice the menu options that you have here are to accept all of them do have the same responses with accept and edit the response before sending accept and send the response or do not if I want to go ahead and send a reply back as tentative to the respond uh, or the uh, organizer I could go ahead and send it as tentative it is not confirmed either accepted or declined but you could go ahead and make that designation if you want to decline you could certainly go ahead and make that designation and send it now if you wanted to propose a new time say you've got some new information or a new uh, schedule that uh, just came in uh, just after theirs but it may have a little more importance than the previous one you can go ahead and make a proposed new time or propose a new time and actually by clicking on that you can actually request for a new proposed time to be set up so whenever you want to make that designation you can see here that the current one is set up exactly as it is right there from 2 30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on Friday July the 1st we want to propose a new time let's propose a new time of 1 30 and let's say we can only make it 15 minutes or excuse me 130 to 1:45 by making that designation you can see that it does set up the graphical area with that no conflicts within that proposed time and once you have those as well as being able to view your attendees all set up go ahead click on propose time and what it will do is it'll create a new message send it to the organizer with the new subject area 
that will notify them of a new proposed time meeting test and current time that is that was sent to me was Friday July the 1st from 2.30 to 3. We just realized we couldn't make that time so we want to actually propose a new time maybe more efficient time of Friday July the 1st from 1.30 to 1.45. Once we get that ready go ahead and click send. You can also include any uh, reply or response as to the need for that change in the scheduling. Um, we just went ahead and sent that right off. Well, I believe that wraps up the video today for how to use Microsoft Outlook's scheduling assistant. There are, of course, a lot of additional features that we can certainly go into. However, for right now, I think that's the, the generalization of being able to use the scheduling assistant to basically create a new invitation or a meeting request to an invited person and be able to see exactly what they have going on ahead of time before you send that request so that you can schedule that request maybe for a better or more appropriate time.